we have a lot of things in this teaching that's really going to be shocking. So I want you to prepare to hear this. We are dealing with uh, some mysteries in the spirit realm. One thing that I want you to notice is that when God made Adam, uh, the woman and the man had two different uh, functionalities to them, and they were both carrying different things. Adam came into the world carrying innumerable amounts of people, but the woman did not. As a matter of fact, God created a woman with a womb to receive the many people that Adam had inside of him. So when Adam came on the scene, Adam is a carrier of innumerable amounts of people inside of his belly. Now, the mystery to this is that where these people were abiding was inside of a section of Adam's soul. A lot of people don't know what the soul consists of. It is a place. This is why God created, um, he created uh, heaven because heaven was really supposed to match the soul of Adam. So Adam was really given, when the Bible said he made Adam a living soul, he made his mind live on the planet called heaven. So now you understand why the Lord said that he blessed him because blessing him means to empower him to take on the same planet in which he abides. That's the true meaning of the blessing. It means that God empowers you to live on the same planet that he abides in. So when he blessed Adam, he took his soul, his mind, which is mainly his mind. The major part of everybody's soul is their thoughts. Your thoughts govern everything. Everything else is secondary in the soul. So when he blessed Adam, he gave Adam the place of heaven. I want you to listen to me very clearly so that you could uh, really carry this new mantle. So when we look at uh, the life of Adam, God really said that he made him a living soul, which means that he made his inward man a place. In his inward man, this place, which is a living soul, had people in it. So let me show you something. When, um, when we see Cain and Abel, these are people that existed on this planet of his soul, in this place of his soul, way before he ever went with Eve. They were already living inside of Adam. So Adam already had all these different people. Now, let me show you this. Not only was Adam uh, carrying Cain and Abel, but he was also carrying Seth. If you remember, Seth was uh, the one that came after uh, Cain killed Abel. Now, here's the secret about Seth. Seth was God doing reincarnation? Because a lot of people don't understand on earth, if somebody dies in a car accident, a drunk driver kills them. If somebody dies because of uh, murder, or if somebody dies because of some type of injustice, there are two things that begin to happen. Either they're taken to heaven and they live out the duration of time in heaven, if they were God's person, or they are sent back to earth in another body. Now, to prove this via scripture, we see that uh, Jesus was attempting to reveal to the people that John the Baptist was actually Elijah. And the reason why Elijah came back in John the Baptist was because Elijah is really. He's more than a man, he's a being that existed with the wisdom angel. Elijah has history with Jehovah God. Elijah is a skinny man with a long beard. And his face looked ancient and he's very hairy still to this day. 
That's the apparel that God gave him as a significance. Is a, is a significance to his um, appearance. The reason why God gave him that appearance because uh, your appearance, even in the angelic and even in eternal life, is how everyone recognizes you. So when people see Elijah in heaven, they know as Elijah because he's hairy. That's his significance. Abraham has a big bosom. I mean, like he's muscular around the chest. So if you see Abraham in heaven, you're going to know it's him. The significance of David is that he's short and he has reddish hair. So when you go to heaven, you're not going to be uh, not knowledgeable about David. Like you're going to see him from a distance. You're going to know this is David. And they all have their different kingdoms. They don't have the same kingdoms. I'll talk about the majority of those things in another broadcast. Because I really want to deal with uh, this, uh, this powerful impartation. So that you can know the Alpha and the Omega of man. And what, what what's really been given. So that you can have the upper hand. Even in the last days. With systems that's going to change. And saints, there's a real bad. Uh, there's a real bad. Um, ending going to happen in this Russia and Ukraine war. And you're going to see that power gets transferred. Just remember what I'm telling you. In the Russia and Ukraine uh, war, you're going to see that power gets transferred. And you may say, what you mean by that? You're going to see that leadership is going to undergo judgment. And you're going to see the economy and the setup and the foundation of both Russia and Ukraine will be different. I also want to say this to you, that some of the places that's on earth today will vanish or vanish rather soon. Especially certain islands. You're not going to see them on the earth no more. And nobody will be able to really track. Where they went. It'll be the same way like the disappearance of planes. Now saints you're also going to hear about. Another plane disappearing in the sky. Just remember what I'm telling you. You're going to hear about another plane. Disappearing. While. Flying and they're not going to know where it went. What happens when planes disappear is that. They are taken away. Number one, from the beings that's in the second heaven, which is another place. Which Apostle Paul was able to see not only Apostle Paul, but he spoke about another man that had an encounter as well. Those places in the second heaven are occupied by beings that fell away from God, but they still have power. And they govern certain regions on earth. They interfere in elections. They interfere in political activities. They interfere in economies. They interfere in families, they interfere in births. Sometimes people have miscarriages. It could be divine or demonic. But these beings are responsible for taking planes that disappear. Now, everybody that's on the board of those planes, they exit into hell. There's departments in hell where you'll see boats. Shockingly. Not only would you see boats, but you'll see planes. You'll see cars. When natural things on earth disappear and they have no trace to it. Those things are 
are taken directly into hell. So even the objects are still there. And that's why uh, if somebody is on a plane and that plane disappears, that that plane is actually an inhabitant of hell. All those people, like they, they didn't even leave their body. They just went directly into hell. But I, I just mean that by the, um, by the disappearance of planes, what happens. But I want to talk to you about really Adam. Now, Adam, when he had a living soul, he had people on that living soul. In that living soul, his soul is a place. Your soul is a place where you live. Now, the soul, it has to live in either or. It can't be in between. Because if we deal with uh, someone that will say, well, my soul is not in heaven or hell, it's on earth. Let me give you a revelation. In scriptural revelation. Remember, in the book of James, Apostle James was one of the three that was always around Jesus. He was with Jesus when he went into Jairus' house to raise his daughter from the dead, which her soul had left her body. But Jesus recaptured her soul, put it back in the body. And then Jesus said that she needed something to eat. Why would Jesus go into saying that she needed something to eat? Because it's like when your car get jumped and it, the battery stops. The first thing that when your car get jumped, it doesn't need to go through pressure. Yes, you drive it, but you got to nourish it because it just got jumped by another car. So you can't drain the car because they already needed a jump. So you got to feed the car the proper things, gas, or make sure that it's not overheating, that you don't leave it to run while you go inside of a store and let it run constantly because the battery was just jumped. So with her, she was jumped in the spirit by Jesus. Resurrection is Jesus giving you a new battery or a battery charge. He taken the life that he has given it to you and so that you can receive a jump. So he told her parents, make sure that you feed her, which is very profound because Jesus was saying now, if she's going to stay alive off of this jump, she needs to be fed. Now, spiritually, what that means is when God raises you from the dead, he takes you out of separation and disconnection to his spirit. When he brings you out of that realm of being blind or being in weakness or sin, you have to be fed in order for the resurrection power to work. If you're not fed, you become dead all over again. But James was a person that went with Jesus everywhere, basically. He was also on the Mount of Transfiguration where Elijah was there with Moses. Now you understand why I said that Elijah had the true appointment with Jesus, not Moses. Moses was just hanging with Elijah on that day. But Jesus' real conversation was with Elijah because Elijah is a being. Moses is too, but Elijah is a being that existed from the beginning. When James says in the book of James about the earthly realm, it said that the wisdom that comes from the devil is earthly or the wisdom of the world is earthly. It's fleshly, it's demonic or it's devilish. So this shows you that your soul can't just be in an earth realm, heaven realm, or hell realm. It's either heaven or hell. Because James, who was with Jesus, talked about how when the, uh, when the wisdom is earthly, or the wisdom that's from Satan is earthly, is devilish. So he used that word earthly. So 
The fact that he also explained as devilish, now you know that anything that's earthly is also devilish. Like if the soul is in the realm of earthly, it's just basically hell. So now you know uh, why we have nature. Nature is the root word for natural. So the Bible says, the Apostle Paul was teaching, the natural man understandeth not the things of the spirit. Now, the things of the spirit is in the place of heaven. The natural man does not understand because the soul of the natural man is in hell. So nature is where we call earth. So that I'm just showing you how the soul can't be just earthly. If it's earthly, it just means that it's in hell. Uh, or it could be in the spirit of the Lord, which is heaven. But your soul was created to be a place. So let me give you a secret to the soul. Whenever your soul is living, that means that it's occupied by invisible people, such as angels, uh, such as um, not only angels, but ministering spirits. If I could tell you uh, the difference between angels and ministering spirits, ministering spirits are simply servants. That's all they do. All they do is minister for you. But angels, sometimes they can co-mingle in assignments. Let me give you an example. The angel Gabriel is working for John the Baptist while he's in the womb of Elizabeth. That's why he comes down and tells John's father to be, which is Zacharias, all these different wisdom and knowledge and instruction and preparation. But Gabriel is commingling assignments because he's also there for Jehovah. So like he's working for John, but he's also there for Jehovah. So when he comes as an angel, the difference between how Gabriel operates in the ministering spirit, the ministering spirit would not have cursed Zacharias to muteness. The ministering spirit would not have gotten angry because the ministering spirits take on the place of a servant. But in the angelic, as you can see, this angel has authority. Gabriel has authority to, uh, deactivate the electricity in uh, Zacharias tongue. So that means that his tongue was no longer able to operate. It mean that his, um, the power circuit within his mouth was no longer able to operate. Now you see the working of an angel. Also, if you want to see this in revelation 12, God did not send ministering spirits to fight with uh, Lucifer in the one third. He sent angels. So now you just understand a little difference between the both. Like, so you understand why um, in Hebrews chapter one, say, are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister for the as of salvation? Now, let me reveal something to you real shocking before I get into the teaching. Their brief teaching. If you notice, we have a moment where um, in Hebrews is saying that are there not ministering spirits sent forth? Now, let me ask you something. Why is Hebrews saying that they're sent forth? Because they wasn't with Moses. That's why you're blessed to be in this new testament, this new covenant. Because Ministering spirits wasn't moving with uh, certain people of the Old Testament. They were sent forth as a new breed of creation that God had made in the invisible ministry of helps. The minute, the administration of assistance, the administration of your inheritance get into you. Now, let me show you something that you probably never saw before. 
The ministering spirits were sent to release an inheritance that Isaac was not authorized to fully have. Jeremiah was not authorized to fully experience. So when you see that the ministering spirits are being sent forth in Hebrews, they're being sent forth underneath a new Adam, which is Jesus, a new covenant, a new testament, a new display of God's plan, which the people in the Old Testament did not partake of. So the ministering spirits are spirits that are responsible for a realm in God to give you things that other people in the Old Testament did not have the privilege to enjoy. Now, you know why in the book of Matthew it said that many uh, righteous men and prophets desire to see and hear what you hear, but they never saw it. So what is the text saying? The text is saying that God on purpose reserved the level of inheritance for the time after his death for people that will receive the Holy Ghost. And also now they have ministering spirits that will come alongside of them that were not on the earth before. So God newly created them for the New Testament. The ministering spirits that have been walking since the book of Acts, that have been moving in the earth since the book of Acts, they came with that dispensation of the Holy Ghost. They are new to the earth. And they are fresh. The reason why you should never lose battles in the spirit realm is because like Elisha said, those that are with us are more than those that are against us. God not only has an outnumbering of angels already in existence since the beginning, but he makes angels every day. There have been thousands upon thousands of angels made today. Specifically today that were not existent yesterday. The Lord will never retire his ability of creation. As a matter of fact, it's a hobby for him. That's where he displays his uh, enjoyment. So you know how some people play basketball. God's hobby, one of his major hobbies is creation. And now let me shock you with this. This is why God created sowing. Seed. And now I want to talk to you about this for the next five minutes. It's going to shock you. The seed was placed inside of Adam before it was placed outside of Adam. God put seed in Adam's soul before he put it in his hands. Now, here's the mystery of this. Adam's soul had seed in it. And inside of the seed was people. People that were supposed to submit to Adam. That's where we get the idea of parenthood. The seed inside of a man are really people that were created to submit to that man. And they are underneath the bracket called children. So watch this. The seed that Adam was carrying inside of him, which is called sperm, according to the medical term, had all type of innumerable people that were supposed to rise up and serve Adam after they was carried by his woman for a period of time. That when she gave birth to them, they would come out and serve Adam, bless Adam, and they would be a part of Adam's destiny. Now watch this. 
So when Jesus came on the seed, scene, talking about the seed principle and said, give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men, 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 given to your bosom. The mystery of that is this, that God made the seed principle to carry people within it. So let me show you something. Every time you sow into me, there's people that you can't see in that seed. So Marco, Ramsey, Greer, Goshan, Samantha may be in a seed that you sow. It might be $400, $300. It might be $2,000, $1,000. There are people hidden in that seed. So why does the word of God say in Galatians 6, 9? And in Galatians chapter 6, rather. It says that don't be weary in well-doing because you'll reap if you faint not. What God is saying through Apostle Paul, the same way a man sows into a woman and he waits for that seed to come out of the womb of that woman and wait for that seed to grow up to help that woman, the same way it is, when you're sowing money, when you're sowing anything that God asks for you, from you, that seed is a carrier of invisible people. So don't let time discourage you that the people will not come out of the seed. Let the pregnancy happen for a term. Because the people that's inside of the seed will surely show up. And Jesus told you what the people will do. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. They'll give into your bosom. Now, saints, let me show you another aspect of this. Now you know how a man, when he sows a seed into a woman, if she becomes pregnant now, she may have triplets. That means that there was three people in that liquid that was deposited into her. It might be quadruplets. It might be twins. Now, here's the mystery of twins. That means that that one seed had two people inside of that one seed. And the two people were not just existed, but they looked alike. Now, here's what's shocking. That shows you that when God made man and he put seed inside a man, some of the seed had identical twins. People that look exactly the same. If you ever looked on earth when you see twins, you notice that they act the same. They finish each other's statements, sentences. They talk the same. They desire the same thing. There have been even situations where twins were joined together and they married the same man. You know that, right? So it was two twins with the same husband. Because twins are identical as the same person duplicated. Hereby you see the mystery of God. And if I could say this to you, the reason why God called both of them, both male and female Adam, because they were twins. They were not different in mindset. They were not different in mission. They were not different in vision. They were not different in appetite and desire. They were the same person. That's why God hid the woman inside of Adam. And Adam was the first man that was pregnant that gave birth to a woman through C-section. 
God was the first surgeon that thought of C-section. Now you see doctors doing C-section on people all the time. So God took this woman outside of Adam. And the woman is really Adam in a female fashion. So hereby you see how God intended even the idea of twins. Because the same way we see it in siblings, it, it was really the first idea with the first man. Now, saints, look at this here. When we look at how God has hidden people inside of the seed, now you know why when you sow, you get a harvest. Because while you're looking at while you're looking at that, the mystery to it is it's really seed. And people are in that seed. Sometimes it's twins. Sometimes it's five people. Sometimes it's a hundred people. Sometimes it's a thousand people. Sometimes it's 200 people. And that's why God tells you never to grow weary in well-doing. Because these people will appear in what time? Due time. When will they show up? Due season. When will they rise up to give into your bosom? At the appointed moment. And the same way that you see that the earth is filled with people that once were a seed from their father. Everybody that you see today from the police officer to the criminal inside of jail, they are all products of a seed that had people inside of it that was sown and due season came and the people that was inside of the seed came out and made a visible presence to the earth. Now you know the power of sowing. That every time you sow a seed, you're not just releasing money. You're releasing people that were created to do unto you what you're doing, you're doing to the spirit of God. They are created inside of your sowing to minister to your need the same way you ministered to God's need. They are invisible people inside of your seed that are created to solve your problems like you have solved God's problems. Now, for two minutes, I want to talk to you about another realm of seed. That's going to be shocking. Now, this realm of seed is in decisions. What we find in Galatians chapter six, I believe, verse eight and on. Talks about he that sows to the spirit. Shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. And he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Even in the sowing of your decisions, your choices are invisible people. So whenever a decision is made, there are invisible people inside of the seed of that decision, whether it be angels or demons. So what happens is the reason why the word says that if you sow to the spirit of the spirit, you'll reap everlasting life. When you sow to the spirit, that means that you're sowing into the Holy Ghost. You're sowing into the Holy Ghost in the schedule that he has for your decisions. You're sowing into the Holy Ghost in the words that he has for you to speak. You're sowing into the Holy Ghost with the thoughts that you are supposed to be dwelling on daily, momentarily, weekly, monthly, annually. 
And so when you're sowing to the spirit, that means that you're investing into the Holy Ghost to receive a transaction of his ways, his emotions, his viewpoints, his perspective, and his conduct. It says that you'll reap everlasting life because inside of this seed that you sow into the Holy Ghost are also angels and ministering spirits. Now, they are also carriers of everlasting life. They are the workers of Jesus that have been translated to now work for you. Now, remember, Jesus came and gave everlasting life. So it's telling you that when you sow to the Holy Ghost, you partner with these invisible people that are also recipients of everlasting life. They will live forever with God. And so I said that you reap everlasting life because you also reap the same verdict, the same future, the same pathway, the same place. Now, it says if you sow to the flesh, you shall have the flesh reap corruption. Now, what is really corruption? Corruption is the transference of demons. So corruption means that mentorship comes from a fallen angel. Ideas come from a fallen angel. So the transference that comes from sowing to the flesh is that the impartation comes from beings that have nothing good to give you. So what they give you in that moment, it equals corruption, which actually means that the soul is now taken down into hell and the soul now carries what hell thinks, how hell perceives, how hell plots, plans, how hell conducts how hell responds. So it says that if you sow to the flesh, that means that if you use the body to do what it's not scheduled to do, it says that you reap a harvest of corruption. Now the corruption goes back to where I started in the soul. That means that the mind is now disconnected from downloads from God. Conversations from God. Words from God. The mind is disconnected from desires from God. The mind is now severed from an interest in God. When the soul is taken to the place of hell. It remains in the place of blindness because everybody in hell is blind. It remains in the place of prayerlessness because everybody in hell do not pray to God. They curse God. Could you imagine that? People in hell today are cursing God. So sowing to the flesh and reaping corruption means reaping the personality of a demon. These are mysteries in the seed of decisions. The seed of decisions has a harvest that you reap in return. And what you reap is either you becoming more angelic, pure, wise, helpful, or what you reap in the seed of decisions causes you to become more destructive, hateful, disinterested, weak, wicked, dark, or blind. This is the mystery of seed in the spirit realm. 
that your eternity will just exist of the seed that you have sown. Your progress in this life will just reflect the seed that you have sown. So while you go through today, make sure that your seeds are to the spirit that you may heap up treasures in eternal life, but also experience those high rewards in this life. The power of the seed of your decisions becoming to the spirit is that you reap the Holy Ghost taking over your body. When the Holy Spirit takes over your body, you become a problem solver. You become a peacemaker. When demons take over your body, you become a troublemaker. There's two things that you reap. You reap peacemaking or troublemaking, depending on where you choose to sow your decisions. Let me show you another thing that you probably never saw before. If you choose to worry, fear, stress, if you choose to be in the cares of this life, trying to handle different things, in that moment, you also reap the personality of a troublemaker. Let me show you something. Jesus did not talk about trouble on the outside in John 14. He talked about trouble on the inside. He said, let not your heart be troubled, which shows you that troublemaking starts with the heart. And then he says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives peace. Let not your heart be troubled. Now watch this. So Jesus dealt with two realms, peacemaking and troublemaking. And he says, let not the trouble be made in the heart, but let the peace be made in the heart. So now if you hop over to Solomon, which is the king of wisdom of the Old Testament, if you study his approach, he said, guard your heart with all diligence in Proverbs chapter four, because out of it flows the issues of life. What Solomon was really saying, train the heart to be a peacemaker, but also protect that peacemaking realm because it will be opposed in this life by the troublemaking heart. Did you know that the end of everyone's life, the story will be told before the judgment seat on whether the heart was measured out as a peacemaker or a troublemaker. Troublemaking is very easy, you know why? Because it requires no effort or resistance. Did you know that? Peacemaking, the reason why it requires a lot of attention is because peacemaking demands effort. It demands energy. It demands motive. It demands a setting, a setting, a setting. And it demands for you to exert a lot of energy towards making it happen. Peacemaking is not something that's automatic. It's something that's grown just like a plant, just like a rose, just like a tree. No tree has ever shown up in one day or three weeks or four months. The tree reaches its full climax through the blessing of time. Jesus talked about people as trees. 
said a good tree can't bear evil fruit, an evil tree can't bear good fruit. David talked about trees as people. He talked about the prosperous tree. He said that this tree meditates on the word of God day and night. Psalm 1, 2. He said that this tree refuses to sit down in the seat of the scornful. This tree refuses to stand in the way of sinners. He said that this tree refuses to obey the counsel of the ungodly. Then he said what the tree will produce. Leaf that never withers. In verse three. He said that it'll bear forth its fruit in season. And everything that this tree does will prosper. So what is the mystery of this tree? The Bible says that if you believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. The reason why this tree is successful. Because it has a prophet in this life. That this tree has committed its whole entire being into following that prophet. This tree has submitted itself to its prophet. This tree have decided to obey its prophet. So this tree is sowing seeds into its prophet, not only of money, but of help, servanthood, love, care, loyalty, protection, obedience, faithfulness, respect, learning, adapting, conforming, praising, thanking, pursuing. The reason why the tree receives a prosperity realm a prosperity glory is because the tree has recognized its true prosperity, which is its profit.